Okay, here we're going to graph the function y equals one-half cotangent of the quantity 4x minus pi. And I'm going to do this in a couple, a couple steps. The first thing I'm going to do is make the coefficient on the x inside the parentheses equal to 1. And to do that, I'm just going to factor the 4 out. So, well, 4 times x will give us 4x. And 4 times negative pi over 4 will give us negative pi. So I'm doing that to determine the period. So recall that the period of cotangent is equal to just pi. And we'll divide that by the absolute value of b, which in this case is positive 4. So the period is going to equal pi over 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually graph y equals 1 half cotangent of 4x. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that graph and I'm going to shift it. I'm going to shift it to the right by pi over 4 units to get the graph that we're actually interested in. So let's graph one half of cotangent of 4x. So recall at x equals 0, we'll, well in this case we'll get cotangent of 0 which is undefined, and that's where we have a vertical asymptote. So um, since the period is equal to pi over 4, our next vertical asymptote for cotangent will occur at pi over 4, and likewise at negative pi over 4. So let's see, um, at the value in the middle, so 1 half of pi over 4, if you multiply that by a half, that'll be pi over 8. It's still going to cross at x equals 0, and then since we're multiplying by positive 1 half, it's going to increase as we move to the left, not as quickly as cotangent does, and it'll decrease not as quickly, but that'll be a rough sketch of 1 half cotangent of 4x, and again at this point, this point would be negative pi over 8, and again you would have the exact same graph just repeating itself, and you could draw as many of these as you, uh, as made you happy. So I think two make me happy, that's good enough. So what I'm going to do now to figure out, to get my new graph, the graph we're actually interested in, is I'm going to take everything and just shift it by pi over 4 units uh, to the right. So pi over 4, that's the same thing as 2 pi over 8. So let's see here. Notice if we do that, what's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen is um, the, the vertical asymptote that was at x equals 0, well, that's going to move over to x equals pi over 4. Right, we're moving that vertical asymptote over, and everything's going to basically move over. It's going to uh, actually just be the exact same graph. Um, if we take the section that we have, just to uh, emphasize that, the the asymptote that was at negative pi over four. Well, if we move that over, that's going to be sitting uh, along the y-axis. The vertical asymptote that we had at x equals zero. that's going to be sitting at x equals pi over 4. The asymptote that we had at x equals pi over 4, we'll move that over. That'll be sitting at 2 pi over 4, or equivalently at x equals pi over 2. So that'll be the asymptote x equals pi over 2. And right in the middle of each of, of uh, right in between each of the vertical asymptotes, it'll still cross the x-axis. So that's still the point pi over 8, and if we add pi over 4 or 2 pi over 8, that'll now be the x-coordinate of 3 pi over 8. But again, the graph, if, you know, if you had more pieces drawn, if you had the entire cotangent graph all, all labeled in our first graph, you would be getting the exact same graph. So 
this function is the exact same thing. Uh, we'll give you, we'll produce the exact same graph as one half cotangent of 4x minus pi.